right, so welcome back to another Milligan Auto Services episode. We are just doing a U turn now. We are attending <coughs> um, an ex trade customer for a battery drain. Uh, the guy's retired now, he just works out the back of his, uh, his home. So we are attending a Nissan Micra for a battery drain reportedly overnight, uh, but we are not too sure. I'll just turn it. Oh, sorry, it's a Nissan Note, actually. Uh, that little Nissan Note is the one that we're in to look at. So we're just going to park up and go and discuss what's been happening. So that is a vehicle that we're in to look at, that Nissan Note. Um, hopefully, I mean, I don't know whether I'll just to dive right into this and do a bulb is dropped right across all the fuses and that will just confirm uh, what we're dealing with here but I've been stung before we're doing stuff like that so let's just get the meter on the uh, battery terminal so on series and just check what current draw we've got I'll <coughs> be by a cold so I'm struggling here <coughs> Turn on 40 milliamps. Right there. So we've got a discharge, I turn on 40 milliamps. Um, so I think the quickest way to resolve this is uh, just basically go through the, the fuses, do a voltage drop test um, across them, find a fuse that's a bit higher than the rest, disconnect it, then do another a test on it. Um, because we've got all the doors locked in so we'll just get another 15 minutes and then see where the battery drain settles down to. Now usually these settle down quite quickly so we've got a, we've got a drain here 240 million. It's higher than it should be, it should be 7 usually on these about 10 million. Pretty steady now but I find on these, these cars they're usually quite quick to uh, go to sleep. What I done was see the red fuses in there. Yeah. <coughs> I just put my, <coughs> my, <coughs> my test bike on it. Yeah. And they were live with the ignition off. Uh -huh. And then what I done was I turned the four of them out. And then I just put them in one at a time and I just was checking for a thing me. Uh -huh. And a fun second one and it was alright, you know, was they give me a discharge. Yeah. So I've just went ahead and done the a uh, millivolt test, a volt drop test across the fuse and if I can try and hold it on there then on there you can see that we've got a high millivolt reading uh, across that fuse and across the end 10 amp fuse and that fuse is for 10 amp electronics so we're going to need to figure out uh, what's on that circuit so this one's a wee bit of a pointless video but I thought I would finish it up anyway because um, the customer's coming for this in a bit so basically the instrument cluster itself is drawn um, the power F14 um, controls the uh, instrument panel elimination um, and somewhere in that instrument cluster uh, power is being consumed so basically disconnect the fuse uh, the power obviously, uh, the current draw from the actual parasitic draw goes all the way down to below 10 milliamps. Uh, so it was just basically disconnecting the instrument cluster and it confirms that the instrument cluster is drawing power. So I've gave the information back to the customer. The customer's going to um, possibly uh, go ahead with a repair, but she's not sure it is an old car. She has been given the option of fitting a remote control isolator switch which I won't be fitting but uh, somebody else will be fitting as that's their option that they've provided for us so she might just go ahead with that it's an easy option it's an old car so we'll just see what happens I don't think we'll be getting a call back for this one but it is what it is uh, we've came here diagnosed it at least that's what we're getting paid for the day so our next job that isn't going to be anything interesting because it's a fairly simple one but 
We've attended this BMW 116, it's a 57, 56 sorry, um, and I don't know if you can see in there but the, it, it had fault codes for Vanos units um, on the inlet, the inlet Vanos units, um, natural actuators are cell and solenoids, whatever you want to call them, but it will not start and if you look in there you can see that the actual Timing chain oh, I wish I could get a better view in there but um, The actual timing chain itself is slipped So whether the plastic guides or the tensioners failed Beyond me but this will definitely not be getting repaired 56 plate, I highly doubt it Okay it's another day um, Had a bit of a rocky morning People cancelling jobs, which is an absolute nightmare, to be really honest with you. Uh, I woke up this morning, first job was cancelled. I thought, okay, um, went to collect the parts for the second job, which I'm out in the van and out. Just collected the parts, uh, got a text saying uh, I'll need to move it to another day. So that's the second job that's been uh, cancelled for the day, or for this morning. So in total, I've lost a bit, I've lost a full morning's work, more or less, because it's not given me enough time to put, book anybody else in or try and move jobs from you know next week to this week. It's just an absolute nightmare. Uh, this is a, just a, a common, a common thing you now. People are just cancelling last minute and they don't care. So. I've managed to move one job uh, to get done this morning, um, which is booked in for next week. Uh, I've moved that till this morning, so I'm going to go and collect the part for that now and get that fitted. It's just an Audi Q5. Uh, we've got a headlight not working, so it's one of the wee uh, gas discharge bulbs. So we'll get that fitted. We've also got an electrical issue with that um, on the 5 volt reference circuit, but it's intermittent, so I don't know if the fault's going to be there when we attend it today. So yeah, we'll just need to go along with the day and see how things plan out. This is just a, a typical a typical thing that we always get uh, cancellations um, all the time. So, let's carry on. So just going through editing that there, uh, I've just realised that iPhone has deleted that video uh, due to storage. So it does that automatically, really annoying, um, but it just means that part of the video won't be there, so that's why it's moved on to the, um, another job. Doing a quick scan on that car there, uh, just quickly, a uh, quick hill scan. The guy's going to drive it, uh, when the fault comes back on, he's going to get in touch with us, um, and then we'll, we'll take it for there, but we need to head to our next, our next job now, we're getting into the afternoon now, so let's do that. Okay, so we're at our next job. We've got this wee Vauxhall Corsa. And the guys complain about an intermittent uh, warning light on the dash. We have yet to... Well, he doesn't know what the warning light was, so we're going to... We're going to do a health scan on it and see what's coming up. So we can see here, we've got a few different faults. Engine control unit hardware. Cellular antenna, not interested in that. That is from the telematics control module. Electronic brake control module. Uh, we have got a U0077 control module com communication chassis can bus off. U0401 invalid data received from engine control module. Generic um, U codes. Typically, that's what happens when there's a fault in the ECM. So we've got our typical Corsa P0171 fuel, sim, uh, fuel trim system lean. So the fuel trims, there's an air leak somewhere, no doubt, which is probably going to be from the EVAT valve. So we'll go into the fuel trims and see what they are. EVAT data might be in there. there. So we've got long term fuel trim, short term fuel trim. Um, and what I'll do, there we go, long term fuel trim is already at 20%, so that's a massive, massive red flag. So I'll go and start the car and see what it is when it's running on the short term. 
so let's see where the fuel trims are at so fuel trims are at 23 percent positive fuel trims way too high so it's definitely um, getting unmetered air coming in so the first thing that we're going to check is just that evap valve all i'm going to do is just give that a clamp and you see the fuel trims will decrease so the short term fuel trims will go back down and you can hear the difference in the engine tone so they're below 4%, 3%, 2% as soon as I let it off you can you'll definitely feel a difference but you'll hear a difference in the engine tone you see the engine starting to misfire ever so slightly but yeah, so we need that evap valve fairly common issue um, so we'll get one ordered up for them so you can see there with that clip that the Vauxhall Corsa that needs a valve so we'll get that fitted uh, next week so we've arrived at our next job which I'll just show you is a Toyota Igo um, the customer complaint with this one is the indicators not working so we're going to run through the tests on that um, it would probably be the indicator stock because we've done quite a lot of these but we still need to run through the testing just to confirm that um, rather than replace an unnecessary part so yep let's crack on with the testing okay so to save a bit of footage time um, you can see we've got S61 there which is your indicator stock um, we've got three wires we've got five and six which go into the instrument cluster itself and we've got a pin pin seven which leads off into a shared ground so we can quite easily um, test if the switch is at fault so what we're going to do is we're going to test the pin 7 which is a ground we're going to load test that confirm that that's good if that's good then we can move on to the next two tests which is give pin 5 a ground and pin 6 a ground if um, the indicator comes on after we do that then we can confirm the wiring integrity from pin 5 and 6 all the way up to the instrument cluster is good and the only component that can be causing it is the internals of S61 which is the switch so I will set up basically here is our plug there and we've got you can see the green wire and we've got the, the yellow and the black which is just behind the, the white so the setup's pretty simple my feed is going to come from the OBD and we'll be using the sort of 1.6, 1.7 amp bulb just to test that ground so you can see this is our setup this is a wee homemade tool so there's actually a magnet in there which you can stick to any sort of metal so you don't need to leave it down in the carpet possibly burn any of the carpet or any of the plastic trims because we've done that before so we're plugged in and we've got a rivet end here and all we're going to do is just go into that, that ground so if I put the camera up here so you can see there got a nice bright bulb going into that indicator stock so you can confirm pin 5 and pin 6 um, is our next test pin 7 is good we've got a good ground going into the switch so pin 5 and pin 6 we are going to test put that end onto the ground and we're looking for a, a yellow and a black wire so if we go into this yellow wire you can hear the indicator comes on that's a right hand indicator so if you just look there the indicator's on and all that's doing is finding a path to ground through that wee bulb so the next one we need to test is a black one 
So we'll just go into that. You can see there, we've got the left indicator. So we can confirm that all the wiring integrity is good on this circuit. Let's say it's basic, basic, basic tests. Um, the switches are prone to these anyway, but may as well run through a test plan instead of just saying, yep, needs a switch. Video comes a bit boring that way, so. Um, yep, so we need the S61, we need the indicator switch. Um, you can clean the contacts inside, but like I say, we, we can't really guarantee that it will not come back. So we're going to order a switch and we'll get a switch fitted. So here we are, this Mercedes CLA. Um, this is a headlight that had the back cover missing and as a result it's damaged um, the actual module inside the headlight so we need to get this bumper removed. It's a bit of a lengthy process, we've got all the torques there. We've got the box up here as well, you see all that's cracked, it's just been letting water in. You can see the, the cover's been missing, you see all the dirt in that in there. You can see the bad, the bad wiring job that's in there as well. So, what we're going to do is get this bumper off and do a proper job here. So what I'm going to do is just put this on a time lapse. See here, the amount of crud you can actually hear it that's going on in there. The poor connections, oh dear. Um, so, he's got his a new control unit, he's got his a two because he just doesn't want any issues with it in the future. And the cover we've managed to get as well, which was sitting at the bottom of the headlight, eh, sitting at the bottom of the mudguard. Somebody's obviously took it off and no bothered to put it back on. I dropped it and they couldn't find it. More than likely, that's the case. So we've got the turn LED module in. We've got the actual controller there for the headlamp. And we've done what we can. The thing is, they've cut the, they've cut the plug too short. So, and this type of wire doesn't take to a solder that well, but I've managed to take it. I've managed to get it to take it, you know, half decently so we'll just put a bit of a bit of grease on that plug um, and that's all we can do with that I'm afraid there's no we can't make that look any better it is what it is I just barely put the bumper on there we go so let's see if this is working now Yep, you can see the headlight is working. So you can see our headlamp is working. So the next step we're going to do is leave it for about five minutes just to test, make sure no other faults come up. Um, after that, we are going to rebuild the bumper and we'll call that a day. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching.